Hello anybody who happens to be around. Uh, you may be wondering why the hell I'm streaming at this time of night, and there is a logical reason for my, um, my madness, and that is I'm going on a trip to Great Britain tomorrow, so I'm staying up a bit late to try to um, uh, get it so that when I go tomorrow I won't be super tired. Um, so I can like sleep in till the idea is I stay up late, I sleep into like the afternoon, and then when I go I'm not so tired the next day. Um, that being said, so I will sort of be away. I have some quality content queued up for you guys while I'm gone. And there'll be lots and lots of self-indulgent vacation vlogs. Uh, while I am away from... Fair can't for Kanakistan. So that being said, let's do some more crash override. Free speech is a worthwhile ideal, but everyone on the internet seems to be doing it wrong. People who get this often default to the argument that free speech only means the government can't silence dissent, but that's the wrong argument. If we are talking about the ideal of free speech and not just the legal concept, that means something more. Sure, it means making sure all kinds of opinions and artwork can be created. It also means if you scream racial slurs, people have the right to call you an ass. Um, Salvi says in the chat, I thought you already finished this novel. Uh, no, I'm not done. I just did one stream of it. I think we're about a third of the way through. Uh, let's see here. You an asshole right back. It means come. Uh, let's see here. Sure, it means. Okay, so let me just look at this again. Okay, let me read Free speech this, is a worthwhile ideal, but everyone on the internet seems to be doing it wrong. People who get this often default to the argument that free speech only means the government can't silence dissent, but that's the wrong argument. If we are talking about the ideal of free speech and not just the legal concept, that means something more. Sure, it means making sure all kinds of opinions and artwork can be created. It also means if you scream racial slurs, people have the right to call you an asshole right back. It means companies are allowed to set and enforce their own terms of service. If you want to ban anyone who thinks, incorrectly, that hot dogs are a sandwich, you totally can. No, you can't do that. And I'm glad that she brings up this issue because... Okay, so the, the way tech companies work is there's a concept in economics called a natural monopoly. That is by virtue of the economies of scale involved, the uh, critical mass involved. That there's something about that particular product that requires, that, that naturally makes it so that one company can kind of monopolize trade. Um, I guess maybe I know the East India Company was an imposed monopoly, but it's to get the level like the industrial level scale of cultivating the tea in India and then exporting it to North America. Not too many countries can actually do companies can actually do that. Um, car manufacturing isn't exactly a, a natural monopoly. It's a natural oligopoly, though. It's a natural law. Uh, there's only a small number of firms that can do it because the amount of capital costs, the logistics involved in doing something like a car is just, it's so astronomical that you need really large companies to do it. And this is kind of an issue I have with distributism. But like another natural law, uh, so tech though is in particular or oh, oh, water companies water companies and electricity are also natural monopolies because if you had everybody buying from different power companies uh that would be a disaster um no power would like i, I don't even know how that would work if you had a bunch of different water companies etc which is why those utilities tend to be owned by the government uh Military force is also a monopoly. There, there's a lot of these. Uh, we can go into that more of that later. But my point is these tech companies are all natural monopolies. And they're natural monopolies because the reason Facebook 
is so big is because it's so big. Everyone wants to be on Facebook because everyone's on Facebook. You could make a site that's way, way better than Facebook. I mean, you could say Gab's way better than Twitter, but just because that exists doesn't mean anybody will go there because they want to be where everybody else is. Nobody, even if people liked MySpace more than Facebook, everyone was on Facebook. Similarly, everyone's on YouTube. YouTube has such a, a huge backlog of stuff. Um, it, it has a critical mass. You have PewDiePie, you have like all your favorite, you have the AVGN, everything. So a rival network would have to A, get all the advertising set up, which Google has a monopoly on anyways. Um, B, they'd have to somehow get a huge user base. But who wants to go? That's why Vidme failed. Who wants to go over to Vidme, which has less than 1% of 1% of the content that YouTube has? Uh, not a lot of people. And uh, Christu Hikari says, ha. Huh. Um, if I'm not making sense, maybe uh, like a more uh, specific question. So my point is, uh, operating systems are another natural monopoly because if everything runs on a different operating system, just nothing would be able to get done. So my point being that natural monopolies are inherently different than other types of business. Like, let's look at like soft drinks. If you don't like a soft drink, you, there's, there's a bunch of other soft drinks. They're widely available. You can just go do that. Same thing with chocolate bars, etc. When it comes to things like Facebook, there's not an alternative and by its nature it can't really be an alternative. And because kind of the unique nature of it, uh, you need to have different regulations for it. So yes, they do need to enforce free speech provisions. They do need to regulate Google ads, prevent them from discriminating against content they disagree with uh, because it, it's, it's a monopoly. Um, you as a business you need access to google ads you need access to uh, i think google ads is like 85 percent or something um google has a huge mar market share and if they want to shut you down they can ruin your entire business so my point being unlike a lot of things like maybe like the wii or whatever it's an essential service more or less that there's no alternative to. So let's continue. Ken, that's your right. It's good that people aspire to the concept of free speech, where the weirdos who thinks hot dog sandwich is an okay concept can continue to use your platform to have totally wrong opinions in relative peace. But where do you draw the line between Actually, this? it's good it brought this up, because I was going to make a separate video on this topic, and I might at some point, but I can at least kind of address it here. It's, it's, it's something that's been bothering me for a while. I, th I think a lot of people just misunderstand it. Line between disagreement and harassment. Our imaginary hot dog aficionado may ask. It's a slippery slope when you start banning for anything that's not explicitly illegal. Where is the line? Actually, it's pretty easy. I'll do it for you. Maybe draw the line at letting people use your service to terrorize people. I. Okay, but terrorizing people is, is subjective. Um, like today some Antifa person uh, posted and said if I met you in real life I would punch you in the face and that doesn't terrorize me because people say stupid shit on the internet all the time um, people post on my channel all the time who are playing a character so they might be like Michael Myers and they'll have a picture of him from Halloween or, or Darth Vader or some Sith Lord and that might scare people. Um, random people you, you don't know messaging you might might scare people. The, the truth of the matter is, um, when it comes to things like censorship, there aren't hard and fast rules. That's not to say I'm even necessarily against censorship. I, I think, as I've said in the past, I'm in favor of censoring um, pornography, for instance. But... It's, it is a, 
it is a sliding scale, uh, like most things in life. Uh, let's see here. People, I think you could probably suspend a user for a while for shouting racial slurs at minorities and sleep pretty well at night. Yeah, but w what is a racial slur? Like, what does that, what does that mean? It's 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 a very nebulous concept. And the, the other issue is it's it's not it's not like enforced for both sides. And that was kind of the issue with you people is is it's not even like universe. It's very it's enforced in a very biased way. And I, I don't think that they should legally be allowed to censor people who aren't breaking the law, um, more or less, because, like I said, it's a monopoly, uh, et cetera. But um, do you think Zoe Quinn's smart enough to know that? Probably not. However, over and over, we saw services using the ideal of free speech as the reason they won't act on open harassment. This is paradoxical because in allowing people to harass others off the service, especially considering how often they're marginalized people, they're actively suppressing the free speech of the people being driven off. They're inadvertently... How? I, that doesn't make logical sense. A, they do act on it. Um, you can report people. You can block people. Like, like if people come to my channel and I don't block people who disagree with me, but if they come and they just start saying like, fuck Jesus, Jesus is, uh, like one person said, like Mary is a whore who cocked Joseph or something like that. And I, I blocked that guy and he was posting some other shit. Like if people do that, I'll, I'm not going to lie. I might block them. But if people post and they say like, Arjun, you kind of seem like a racist. I, I, I don't think you really understand this, etc. I think that you're a hateful person. Like I won't block people over that. Like I, I think you're within your rights to block people if they're just flaming you. Um, and not adding anything, but like if somebody's actually going to disagree with me, then that's fine. I didn't really block anybody on the, uh, the videos, it, but I defend the right of people to censor within their own domain. So if DSP wants to ban people from his, his videos in which like, cause like who are just trolling him. That's well within his right. There, that's, I, I think that's fine. I think that's like a freedom of association thing. But can the whole site ban people? I don't know. I guess maybe if they're being like super abusive. But I don't know. I kind of feel unless they're doing something actively illegal. At least at this point. Um, I, I'm against really kind of censoring it. Um... I, I do I do think though that um, restricting content based on age is a good idea. Inadvertently creating a culture of fear on their platforms, it had a chilling effect. I had heard from too many people to count that privately offered support, but were too scared to publicly speak out because they knew this culture exists and is relatively unchecked. Who could blame them for keeping their head down? Now I could just copy and paste that paragraph. And use it to describe pretty much the job market for any of us. If any of our views were ever made like public, we would not be able to, a lot of us would, would lose our jobs. It would be hard for us to get a job in the future. Um, isn't that a culture of fear? <coughs> I mean, let's look at me. I say some edgy stuff. But I don't know if I've ever, like, said I'm personally going to kill somebody. Or I don't think I've ever yelled 1488 race war now. And, and if I've said stuff like that, it's pretty obviously me being sarcastic. Or something like that. Like, the death to Normie's party is very obviously a joke. But I, I would be censored. Whereas... Um, oh, nice to, thank you, Johnny Text. Just, uh, if people are coming in and I'm talking kind of quiet, I'm going to Great Britain. 
uh, in the morning. Well, tomorrow night. So I'll be leaving around 10 p.m. and arriving at 9 a.m. And I can't sleep on planes. So I'm trying to stay up late so I can sleep in till like the afternoon and make it somewhat less bad. So yeah, it's Whisper ASMR. But uh, yeah. But no, it's, I mean, her, her people have created a culture of fear where no one can express an opinion. And not even just like unpopular neo-Nazi, whatever, white supremacist um, uh, opinions. But just like even normie mainstream conservative opinions, like like in, I remember in, in Canada, um, somebody had said we shouldn't be teaching children who still believe in Santa Claus that they could be transy trannies because at that stage of their life, they can't regardless of how you feel about it. They can't make a decision. A, they haven't gone through puberty. B, when I was like four years old, I thought I was like a robot cyborg dinosaur. And I like that was that was like what I thought. And I wanted to grow up to be like to replace my internal parts or something like, you know, kids believe all kinds of weird shit. And you're going to tell them that like, it's, it's just even back then when I kind of thought I was sort of liberal, I thought that was like the most sensible thing in the world. And the people in my uh, fourth year class said that, uh, said that those people um, uh, should be executed. They should be killed for that, that, that hate statement. Um, I mean, that's not a culture of fear. Um, I'm afraid to donate to political parties. Uh, like like when Faith Goldie ran for mayor, I would have liked to donate to her. The thing though is if I were if I donated to her, that goes on to permanent uh, record and any employer at any time in the future. Um, What was I thinking? Uh, that was a game I used to play with my grandfather, actually, the whole cyborg robot thing. <laughs> he used to have, like, a, a story where I was the king of, like, some, like, dinosaur kingdom. And the villains were, like, these mischievous beavers or something like that who kept like damning and flooding it. I I don't really remember. It was I was very young, but god, I loved my grandfather. He's the only person I guess really close to me who's ever died, but he was really edgy on a lot of things and um it's 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 I'm sorry we're getting completely off topic, but I took my Zappa clone so I'm kind of uh drifting uh, the, my grandfather is really the only person, well, I guess my parents, but they aren't as, like, over the top about it, who just unconditionally loved me in such a, like, open uh, way. And, uh, no, I, I loved my grandfather. He he was pretty edgy. Um, it, it's kind of interesting in his case because... When his um, grandchildren were born, he had been kind of a drunk. He might have had some affairs. He, he chain smoked. But he he stopped smoking and he stopped uh, drinking once his grandkids were born. And he just really doted on us. Um, just spent a lot of time around us, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, why do you take Zopiclone if you're trying to stay up all night? Um, I don't want to stay up all night, maybe till like one or two. Um, just, I'm really excited about the trip, so it can be hard to sleep the night before anyways. But yeah, no, I loved my grandfather. As I've said, I, I can't imagine being the person I am today and you can like me or dislike me, but I, I am, despite my issues, able to hold down a full-time professional job, um, I'm not like on drugs, etc. Uh, the 17 year old kid asks, where are you going? I'm going to Great Britain. 
and Scotland. So there'll be lots of vacation vlogs uh, over the next week or so. I, I'm going to have to say if any of you are going to go to Great Britain, it is extremely expensive. I spent probably two to three times as much as I had originally budgeted. Like when I went to Spain, it was very inexpensive, relatively speaking. Britain is super expensive, but I want to see the land of my ancestors. I've always kind of kind of wanted to make a pilgrimage there. Uh, so as I've said, my father's side is English, probably with a bit of Scottish thrown in there. Maybe like, but they're at least in Canada, they're kind of the same thing. Uh, one of my, my great, great grandfathers served in British India. Um, my great uncle served with the Gurkhas in World War II as a commando. So, anyways, I'm completely off topic. How free is the speech on your service, really? When anyone who has an I just always like to stress because I think this is something that we we don't place enough value on on a society. For a young male. Oh, thank. Oh, okay. I didn't sleep with these. River Run says I didn't sleep with these men for favorable reviews. I slept with them so they would introduce me to people who would give me favorable reviews. Um. Yes, that's that's very true. Uh, that more or less seems to be what Zoe did. But um, no, I just uh, just if I can finish that point and then then we'll I'll stop rambling at least in this respect and move on. But I think as a society, we don't appreciate how important having a good male role model is for a boy growing up. Because, and that's kind of why single motherhood is such a, 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 an issue is a guy, a, 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 a boy, like a boy who's becoming a man, boys to man, needs a male figure there to model themselves after. Uh, they need a father figure. They need somebody who's there for them, who will discipline them, uh, who will, um, who will, like I said, just to just show them what it's like to be a man. Uh, my father worked every, basically, I think he only took, before he got his hip uh, operation, I think like three days, three sick days in his 37 year uh, career, and he had like, 26 days a year he was in a very um uh pleasant uh industry but growing up with a father like that like who like i said worked for a living um made great time and sacrifices to provide for his family i i can't like overstate how important that is in the life of a kid um of a young man to have that male role model there so I just like to give credit to my, my father whenever I can. Because, um, and this is something I said Father's Day. Ultimately, if you have decent parents, all they really want is for you to love them and to show that you appreciate them. And like beyond that, um, everything else is kind of secondary. But sorry, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get back to this. Anyone who has an unpopular opinion or is a marginalized person has to triple think everything they say because they know if people on your service decide to use it to ruin their lives, you'll do nothing. Almost all services on the web have some kind of terms of service or abuse reporting procedure. Wait a minute. How free is the speech on your service really when anyone who has an unpopular opinion or is a marginalized person has to triple think everything they say because they know if people in your service decide to use it to ruin their lives, you'll do nothing. That sounds, that sounds exactly like how dissident right people are treated. Exactly. I could have said something like that. Anybody like who's listening to this could have like said something like that. The complete lack of self-awareness that is evident in this is just astounding. Because, I mean, that's what she does. That's what her side does. That's the entire, that's the entire purpose of her, her modus operandi. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's the lack of self-awareness 
to my mind, and this is something I've always believed, the sign of a good person is someone who doubts whether or not they're a good person. And I mean, think about that for a minute. It kind of makes sense. So if, if you are like someone asks you a good person and you say, I try to be, I, I don't think I succeed, then that shows you have a degree of self-awareness and you have a degree of responsibility uh, beyond yourself. But let us continue. Almost all services on the web have some kind of terms of service or abuse reporting procedure. And throughout all of this, we saw very little enforcement. Sometimes it was due to treating harassment as a free speech issue as mentioned above, but that was far from the only problem we came up against. Sometimes companies don't even understand online harassment, despite working in tech. Dead naming, or the practice of finding out and distributing a trans person's birth name for the sole purpose of harassing them with it, doesn't appear to be against any company's terms of use. Oh, you mean like what you assholes do to everybody who's vaguely right-winged? To like anybody who even fucking posted like, like not, like we aren't even talking about people like, um, like me even. Although I I like to think I'm pretty like placid in terms of what I say. Like I'll talk to people and stuff. I won't like scream at them. But like, what we're talking about is like some boomer who posts make America great again on their wall or like some kid who's like, who thinks Trump's cool. And he posts like a quote, like we're going to be winning so much. You'll get tired of winning. So it amuses him. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's exactly what they do. And the total, lack of self-awareness here is just fascinating use yeah and they'll ruin that person's life they'll get them fired and there's been a tech i forget which tech company it is someone could post in the chat where they said if any anyone here voted trump we're gonna have to ask you to leave the company use i've only seen doxing explicitly forbidden on two services one of them ironically is 4chan over the course of Gamergate, 4chan ended up banning discussion of it. Think about how toxic a community has to be to get banned from the board that uses racial slurs as punctuation and they mass exodus to a board called 8chan. 8chan markets itself as a pure and unchecked bastion of free speech, and subsequently its most active users consist of literal neo-Nazis, people sharing around child pornography, and now, Gamergate. Some companies, like Twitter, have an archaic and useless reporting procedure. Then, even if they take your complaints seriously, they have a hard time actually... I love how all those things are the, um, are considered the same. People complaining about G Gamergate, neo-Nazis, and, like, racial slurs. Like, I, I don't fucking get the racial slur thing. Like, I don't know, people call each other shit all the time on the internet. These people just have to grow a fucking backbone or or just block people. Like, I, I, it's just she says it like it's some kind of mystery that the Internet's toxic. The Internet's always been toxic. And I, I'll use that terminology. It is toxic. People call each other shit. People try to ruin each other's lives. I mean, sometimes you get lucky and you have like a, a, a community of of people like the one I've gathered around myself and, and we, we may poke and uh, like take um, make fun of each other a bit, but we're generally a pretty good bunch of guys who are decent to one another. But no, the internet is, is often a very unpleasant place and I'm not going to lie and say that that's a good thing, but uh, let's see. The thread and swan says 4chan and 8chan aren't even right wing. Even poll is only somewhat right wing. Okay, so they're right wing because they're counterculture. And since the entire culture is left wing, them being extremely against the cu the culture makes them inherently right wing. Like South Park used to be kind of right wing on a lot of issues because they were um, trying to be politically incorrect 
and they were trying to um, take like pot shots at the power structure. So South Park was kind of right wing in the sense that it was uh, uh, taking that perspective. But um, yeah, let's continue. Time actually enforcing it. One of the ringleaders who is readily distributing docs and openly harassing anyone he could would proudly show in his avatar how many times he'd been banned or suspended and kept coming back like a shitty rash. Even when tech companies are willing to hear you out, they easily fall prey to this information. Too many people in positions of power will react before researching. So when Intel was targeted by a massive email campaign, accusing their company of advertising on a news website that hated gamers. Okay, but this is exactly what you guys do. Even tech companies are willing, to, even when tech companies are willing to hear you out, they easily fall prey to dis disinformation, which is basically just Twitter. Gamers, Intel knee jerked and pulled their ads from the website. This was at a time that if they had spent a few minutes googling what Gamergate was, they'd find out they were about to make a very expensive mistake. As a result, they ended up having to renew the ad campaign and sink $300 million into diversity initiatives to make up for this misstep. Alex's employer got mobbed by the same letter writing campaign, but they had our backs. Their response was essentially we are French, we do not give a fuck. But then they started brigading all the studios his employer worked with. They started brigading Ubisoft, who folded like a stack of cards. Alex amicably mutually parted ways with the studio, not wanting to cause more trouble for them, and we were both tremendously disappointed. We had always talked about how everything would be okay because we'd run off to France together, and wouldn't have to be moving from friend's couch to friend's couch with a mob nipping at our heels. Now we were looking at a reality where there was no end date on that. When it became clear that we were not going to get the help we needed, we had to do something. We had to try everything. We finally decided it was time to go to the police. And CSI, cops struggle with internet. I don't know, but like, I, I think doxing should be illegal, but I don't know. None of this really makes any sense, to be honest internet i've spent more time with lawyers and cops than i have family and friends lately it's apparent why more abuse victims don't bother fighting their abusers in court when all you want is for shit to be over and to move on with your life it's like jumping down to the next ring of hell instead tonight was the first time i spoke with a female officer and watching her read over some of the stuff he's written and the look of horror on her face was kind of heartening in a way i mean it's fucked up but when you spend 20 hours of the last 48 going over and cataloging your ex-boyfriend's abuse that has been so egregious it's hit international news, it becomes all you know. When you see him repeatedly brag or talk about how he's going to fuck you over more when he wins, it makes you instinctively panic. When it's just reams and reams of being told how horrible you are, how you deserve death or worse, you lose perspective on the people who are reasonable. You forget they're there. You fall down a rabbit hole, then someone else takes a look at it and is horrified, and you're like oh right, I forgot this is horrible and not at all normal, like you're a cartoon character coming out of an especially bad acid trip, the f- Uh, I, this, I don't think this happened, or if it does, it's because at this point in time police just, like, have no idea what the internet's like. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, um, when I deal with a lot of people- I'll often just say you're very naive. You just, you don't understand the, like, just the basis of how this stuff works. First time I tried to file a police report was nothing short of disheartening. When things had finally escalated to the point where the mob nipping at my heels were doing things like brigading the IRS with reports that I was committing tax fraud, I thought since they were starting to fight on the playing field of older institutions and real life, it was time to start interfacing within myself. I had to start establishing a paper trail. I hadn't thought there was any point in bothering with it in the first place because of the degree to which traditional institutions are behind the times in terms of caring about, or understanding, anything about internet culture. It's not entirely their fault either internet- Actually, to a certain extent, the police kind of understand more 
because they get that most of this is just bullshit. Like, most of it is just fucking, like, teenagers or whatever trying to just troll people for the lulls. I mean, there, there's nothing, like, weird about it. There's nothing, like, that's a mystery about it. But she seems to act like it's it's a mystery. And it's a mystery that the police would be like, yeah, there's nothing we can really do. Whatever. Internet culture has its own rules and dialects, so much so that an outsider trying to understand posts on 4chan will likely get lost in all the jargon, in jokes, and assumptions. Beyond that, when something happens online it's difficult to even find the right jurisdiction to report in. We were still getting threats of violence tied to my old address, so we couldn't go home to file in my precinct. The local places we were visiting said all they could do was take a citizen's report, and the FBI was impossible to talk to. It wasn't until Iran started soliciting titles from the mob for a follow-up post that we decided to pursue the legal angle further and see about getting a restraining order. So you're faced with what to do when you've been so badly abused it's made international news. Do you go to the police or not? Well, if you don't, they'll claim that it wasn't real because there's no police report. They did so with Anita Sarkisian, who did have a police report, which was conveniently ignored. If you do enter the system, you have to accept that all of what I've already written is what you're facing down, with little chance at actually seeing justice. In the, um, in the current year, police place very little emphasis on trying to investigate accusations that uh, someone with a VJJ is getting abused. Uh, the police will not do anything about it. Um, they they won't try to help them, uh, especially if it's sexual harassment, like she claims it is, from a person whose real identity is known. The police aren't interested in that kind of thing. They're out solving real crimes. Justice, be willing to sign up for the years-long process in the event that it actually goes to trial, and know you have little chance of a court order stopping your obsessive abuser any more than seeing people target and hurt your family and the families of those close to you ever did. You also get what is happening now. There are police reports, there are court documents, and there is validation by the legal system that what has been done is not okay, but all of that is overlooked to continue to spin the narrative. Your police reports? The difficulties of explaining online abuse and harassment to law enforcement hurt you twice. Initially in your ability to get very real, very horrific things done to you taken seriously by the system in the first place, and then later adding insult to injury by having any inaccuracies or misunderstandings entered onto the report by the officer attributed to you maliciously lying. Not only do you get hit the first time by the despair and frustration in translating internet to real life, but then when it translates back you are blamed over the very faults and difficulties that were hurting your ability to protect yourself in the first place. A well-meaning officer who bothered to take you seriously and tried to navigate a world they didn't understand is now being used against you by the pitchfork and torch crowd all the same. The crowd doesn't understand or care that police reports are far from the end all be all and that a detective always has to get to the bottom of things, but that doesn't stop them from blowing it up into cries of perjury and using it to reinforce their prior malicious claims, or to further involve themselves in things as private as domestic violence cases. The affidavit given to the court? Think pieces are written by strangers in bad faith about how your abuse isn't real dissecting it and tossing out anything it actually says to instead try and fix it on whatever can be spun to suit the narrative of you being worse than Hitler, without even a way to confirm that any of their suspicions are true. There is no forest, only trees every- Isn't this like what she and her ilk do to absolutely everyone who disagrees with them? Yeah. Trees every sentence becomes fixated on so aggressively that any meaning is lost, any context or nuance is stripped. Okay, I want to take a, a, a vote here. Um, press 1 if you think she's just has absolutely no self-awareness and she doesn't understand that this entire thing describes herself even more than it describes the people she's criticizing. Or press 2 if she's actively aware of it, but she doesn't care and she's just trying to um, attribute to other people the things that she knows she herself is are, is guilty of stripped away and you are denied your humanity yet again 
You watch people use the very things proving something deeply wrong happened to you to perpetuate more horror, and are forced to discuss private trauma on a public, hostile stage. You are forced to watch people who want you dead dig into private, painful abuse and call you a liar complete with highlights and notations. This chapter will talk about the challenges of navigating the legal systems when you're dealing with things that have happened online. I'll talk about how we got a restraining order, how my ex continued to violate it and seek money to take me to court to remove it to give more information to the mob, and try to dispel common misconceptions about how the legal system and the internet intersect. I'll also discuss Anita Sarkeesian's similar experiences with getting her cases taken seriously, despite facing multiple years of abuse. August never ends, when your life gets engulfed in a shitstorm that makes international news. After the initial shock wears off, it's not the big things that kick you down. In a weird way, after the first few waves of shock and terror and nausea wear off, you kinda get used to it. Each new thing is simultaneously easier and harder you're used to it, but it's cumulative. But you go into survival mode after a while, you get better at it. Normal becomes a distant memory, it's the quiet moments it catches up to you, it's after everyone else is asleep in the house that isn't yours that you're staying in because you're afraid to be alone, not just because of the death threats but because you're scared of what might happen if you stop for 5 seconds. It's when you linger in the bathroom after a shower. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> like... Okay, sorry, someone's messaging me on Facebook. Uh, let me just uh, mute that so that's not obnoxiously in the background for the duration of this. Um, like, this is so fucking lame. Okay, so River Run says, so she sought publicity on in a public forum for the thing that was happening to her, and she was got a, upset when she got attention, and more stuff started happening. Real shocker, isn't it? Okay, so let's just go back over this, because this is... This is amazing. It's after everyone else is asleep in the house that isn't yours that you're staying in because you're afraid to be alone, not just because of the death threats but because you're scared of what might happen if you stop for five seconds. It's when you linger in the bathroom after a shower, looking at your naked body and feeling worthless after every slurred appraisal of everything wrong with it, after waking up to another pornographic comic. After seeing the nicer strangers say you are indeed fuckable but only for a weird and gross reason. It's when your boyfriend wakes up for the third time, pleading with you to come to bed with the same look on his face yet when he told you he was watching you waste away when you couldn't sleep or eat for a week when this all started, the first time you ever actually saw him scared, that's when the horror creeps in. That's where the not knowing lives. It dangles over you, just under the hum of the appliances. And when it's quiet enough, it crushes you. It's as if when survival mode ends, you forget how to actually be alive. You think awful and stupid things about if any of the faceless mob will make good on their threats. An especially shitty part of you have- This is like, that what might have been like the single most narcissistic thing ever. Really, like a bunch of people made fun of you on the internet. Um, River Run says literally had professional porn made of her. Is that true? Or is that just something she made up? Because it's, it's hard for me to tell at this point in time. But her, um, her life was really bad. Like, it's just, like, does anybody believe this shit? Like, do, do, do we believe that she was really like in this bad estate or is this just like a narcissistic pity me thing to try to get money and sympathy out of people of you half wishes they'd get on with it already i had a night out with friends which i was late for thanks to having to find oh, you know what i have to play this let me see here a silver tongued talker right oh i'm just gonna say it one way and hopefully you'll believe it, even though that's not the truth. And that's literally what's happening here. The guy's a liar. The guy's a fucking blatant liar and lying to everyone. But people are believing it because they don't know any better. Exactly. Fourth police report and drop off evidence at a courthouse for a hearing the next day. 
I hadn't seen anyone that turned up before all of this happened, and it was the second time I'd tried to see folks on the sly while in town to press charges. Wouldn't want the person who was bragging about leaving a dead squirrel in my mailbox know I was in the same town as them. When you see people after a life-destroying event, you only ever have one conversation, looped endlessly on repeat. You find yourself rating, not talking, telling a story instead of catching up with friends. What's up gets replaced with how are you holding up? I love my friends but I see the sadness in their eyes. I pull punches. I hold a lot back. I tell the story. I see Alex step in to tell the stories that he is better at orating than I am. Neither one of us is present. We're on autopilot. I can anticipate what he is going to say almost line by line and I'm sure he's used to my script as well. A social life stuck on repeat. Everybody knows what happened to you. Everyone knows. I hate to say it, but you're an event now. My friend tells me across the bar during a discussion on planning for future development directions based on predicting marketing and cultural trends. An event. Wow, that was... That was really... Meaningless. Um, y you know what she sounds like at this, this place in her life? She sounds like this. Adit is someone who's like a no-life. Not in education, employment, or training is what NEEP stands for. <clears throat> exactly. Event. I'm something that happened to the industry. I become an issue. A thing to weigh in on. A thing to consider. I know he didn't mean it insultingly, and he might even be right. Lord knows I lack the perspective to judge that, past a certain threshold, the harassment becomes too big and too public to ever go away even if you do. This was the case for Kathy Sierra, another woman in tech, who had been similarly attacked. She vanished for six years only to return to the web with the same hatred and virulence floating around as when she left. Similarly, Anita Sarkeesian has been dealing with this level of hatred since her Kickstarter made her targeted by the same kind of people targeting me now back in 2012. It becomes profoundly alienating and difficult have you tried like not stealing the money and not raking video game reviews no okay difficult to relate to people who have never had to deal with this kind <coughs> of thing i went to a convention in georgia to give a keynote speech the way i used to before all of this happened and had to be escorted around by armed guards at a party later when i let my guard down for five minutes and talked with people Someone told me they only started talking to me to see what all the fuss was about. I left the room to go to another, and a girl had Gamergate written across her forehead because she'd lost a bet. I was surrounded by what- Oh my god, I bet you that didn't happen. That sounds like the most, like... Like, this is the most just like contrived obviously made up thing i've ever heard in my life even if it did happen like oh no i saw somebody who like it's it's like something from a fucking slasher movie i found this it's like if laurie stroud like went to a party or something and somebody came in and they were wearing a michael myers mask and that caused her to have like ptsd it sounds like something. It sounds something like that. By what was going online in my offline life, and felt like an outsider in places I used to feel welcome in, I found immense comfort in visiting Phil Fish immediately after, the first time I'd seen him since he stood up for me and had gotten hacked for it. It was hard facing him after he had gotten targeted because of our friendship, but he never remotely held it against me, saying he'd been targeted yeah, for years sure anyway. Conversations with Anita helped as well, since she had been living with it for over two years, and felt a responsibility to other women in her position. When Law & Order SVU did an episode based on what happened to us, we had the same seemingly irrational reaction to it and were able to talk through it with each other. With other friends, everyone wanted to talk about what was happening to me. Even the support becomes alienating and tiring. You find yourself explaining your trauma over and over until all you want to do is just hide. I'll talk a bit about the day-to-day -day life after abuse becomes a permanent fixture in your life, 
the toll it can take on your personal relationships, and how you can never go back to your old life. Show why doesn't she just stop reading the comments? Like, just what? Like, is that just not an option? Just, just stop reading the comments. I, I don't get it. Whatever. Show cause. Nearly five months had passed since my ex-boyfriend had so completely ruined my life that the resulting damage would become the basis of a law and order (SVU) episode. And finally, we sat before a judge during a show cause hearing to determine if this was, in fact, a crime. Weeks after finally moving on with my life, my ex barged into the places I worked and lived swinging around an 8,000 word manifesto the New York Times would later describe as a strange, rambling attack that could have been edited down into a single word, horror. As violating as that was, I would never have guessed it would have aoke in the sleeping it of thousands of broken, hateful people who would rally behind his banner and form what would end up being classified by academics as a hate group featured on Southern Poverty Law Center's Hate Watch, and mocked on the Colbert Re So academics, including a non-academic organization in the Colbert Report. So the Colbert Report is apparently a, a academic institution that can make these, these complicated, I don't know. Report. As the defense dramatically <coughs> waved around an article Craig had commissioned from me about the whole ordeal, making claims that sounded suspiciously close to she was asking for it, I tried to mentally let my mind go limp in the hopes that it would make time feel like it was passing a bit faster. This was the fifth time that I found myself in this tiny, sterile room, tightly gripping the over 200 pages of evidence of the hell that my family and I had been through for the fifth time, and it never got any easier. I tried to keep my eyes focusing straight ahead on the tiny table in front of me so I could pretend I wasn't in the same room as the man who had, tried to maintain posture, tried to look like whatever I thought a good victim would look like, while the lawyer that was paid for by the hate group my ex incited to- Okay, so, of the, the memoirs we've gotten through so far, okay, if- Okay, so- if you think Elliot Rogers had the most narcissistic biography, press one. If you think this is the most narcissistic, press two. If you think movie Bob's was the most, press three. And if you think the um, Unabomber's manifesto was the most, press four. Sorry, there's an issue with the sound. Um,
Okay, because I can hear it on my end just fine. Okay, let me see here. Okay, because I can see it broadcasting um, when I'm looking at it. Uh, like um, OBS is saying that there's live audio. Uh, let me just try this again. Let me try to boost this a bit. Ah, uh, did that come through? Well, wasn't it working like a minute ago? I want streaming speakers. Okay, let me just see if I can figure this out. Okay, streaming headphones. Um, is it working now? I just don't get it because I can see the bar going. I can see um, it. I can hear it and I can see it being outputted. Uh, let me try to turn this up to like really high and see if I can get this going. Still not working. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how that can be that case because desk because wasn't it working like a minute or two ago? Like I think it was working like even just a couple minutes um, previous. Let me see if it's mute for me. You're right, it isn't. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see here. Can I change the properties? Use this device. Okay, let's try default. Um, let me just try stopping and starting and see if that fixes it. No. Um, wow. I, I don't know like how that could happen. Did, did you cycle the router?
Okay. Suggesting to unplug and plug back in my audio. <sighs> let's see here. I want headphones. Okay, let's see if that fixes that. No. Uh, okay, I guess, I don't know. If, if, if this isn't working, I guess we're going to have to stop here. Unless I can get this figured out. I don't know. I just, I don't understand why it suddenly stopped. Because it was working for like the last hour. Uh, let's see, is it a mixer thing? No, it's all covered under mixer. Hmm. Okay, here we go. OBS stopped outputting desktop audio midstream. Uh, okay. Um, okay, that person couldn't figure it out. Uh, hmm. The only thing I can think of, I'm going to try closing OBS and reopening it. So let's see if that fixes it. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Uh, stream resumed. Let's see if this is working now. If not, I'll probably have to just stop here for the evening. I'm not issuing the charges in the case of harassment, the magistrate stated plainly. Okay. If this is the way the internet is, I'm not you should really just get the case of harassment, the magistrate stated plainly. Okay. There we go. This is the there we go. It's It's working. I guess I just had to restart OBS. I guess something just stopped okay let's go back up and um uh where did it stop work going we'll just go back up to uh here i guess i'm it just gonna timestamp that absurd five months of fighting back against a near cartoonish rogues gallery of child pornographers literal nazis the lead singer of forgettable new metal band disturbed and a lesser baldwin Months of watching a self-proclaimed consumer revolt failing to be anything but a mess of revolting consumers, so inept at doing anything other than terrorizing people that even a baby seal they spite adopted died before the paperwork could go through. Months of rubbing my temples at the daily conspiracy theories and weird mythos these people would kick up and wholeheartedly believe that I was controlling all of the media and multiple federal departments through kisses, that I was secretly a Roosevelt heiress dating a millionaire arms dealer's son, and that we were hiding in Europe to dodge the feds for fictional crimes against a deranged Jew salesman. It had been five months of finding other people who had been in similar places that I had, looking out for each other and other strangers as they became targets too, and planning on how to keep this from happening to anyone ever again. 
months of growing closer to my new partner that I had started seeing a mere week before the nightmare began, who had stayed with me and fought back too even as his employers and family became targets too. Months of refusing to bend to terrorism despite the fear and loss, hoping to improve the culture that let this happen, trying to figure out how to make lemonade out of the metaphorical lemon tree that had fallen onto my car and shattered my windshield. All of this, over a shitty breakup and a video game review that never existed, this hearing was to be the last, hopefully. Criminal charges had already been issued in the case of my ex breaking the restraining order that had been granted overwhelmingly in light of the evidence, but this was the time I'd finally get to hear the court say that the last five months were an unacceptable thing to do to a human being. They would finally say that yes, it is illegal for you to knowingly, unapologetically, raise and coach a mob of vigilantes in your ex's workplace that hurts so many people so egregiously it makes international headlines and leaves a multi-billion dollar industry in fear. Finally all the women in my field who had been silently worrying that they were one unstable ex from being in my shoes would have some cold comfort that this was not just a thing you could do to someone without facing consequences. Maybe I could start moving on with my life and finally get away from this man. Sadly, none of that would come to pass for one simple fact. It happened on the internet. I'm not issuing the charges in the case of harassment, the magistrate stated plainly. If this is the way the internet is, you should really just get offline. Just stop posting. I was... Holy fuck, this magistrate's fucking based. Patrolled. Patrolled. You know what he said to her? He said this. We're casting you out of Valhalla. Because you don't know the riddle of steel. Wow, he just fucking... He just took her down. Let me see if I have another sound clip that about, um... Uh... No, there's nothing really relevant. I was floored. I had recorded, sorted and presented the biggest known case of orchestrated internet-based harassment with proof that it was done deliberately in an act of vengeful domestic violence, and I was being told without him even looking at it that there was not enough to fit the low standard of probable cause for a harassment case. I was floored for another reason though. That wasn't how the internet was. Despite the last five months, I still loved the web. It's the place where I met some of my oldest friends, it's an invaluable learning tool for just about anything you can think of. It's a resource that breaks down barriers I'm to gonna creating go grab a snack. I'm just going to leave media. this running. Hell, it's what led me to becoming a game developer in the first place. It gives voices to so many people with valuable contributions to make to humanity that would be traditionally unable to speak, and ignoring those to focus purely on the voices screaming hatred and death threats is insulting to me in a way that feels as if someone had stepped on my hometown pride. It's my workplace and my community, and I even have a microchip implanted in my hand that sends people to specific websites. It's a part of me on every conceivable level, and I'm hardly unique in this regard it's becoming more and more of a part of everyday life. Treating it like a magical alternate dimension where nothing that happens on it counts no longer works when most news networks actively source things from Twitter and other forms of social media. Telling a victim of a mob calling for their head online to simply not go online anymore is like telling someone who has a hate group camping out in their house to just move out. Now I was being told not to go home in a completely different way than when the death threats had started up five months prior. Sir I'm an independent game developer who makes web games, I said, still reeling and numb from the decision. I would have to throw away my career and everything I built to stop being harassed by these people. You're a smart kid. He stated, half winking on his way out the door. Find a different career. Alex was waiting for me as I left the room, careful to avoid seeing my ex and feeling that sick pit deep in my stomach that always welled up and nodded into panic and fear every time I did. My head was full of static and I had a hard time explaining to him what happened in there. Even though criminal charges had issued in the case of violating the abuse prevention order, it felt hollow. I didn't want revenge or retribution. I had spent so long just trying to get away from him it was being told by the institution ostensibly there to protect me that none of the hell we had lived through and the lies and abuse that would likely follow me for the rest of my life were not harassment by a magistrate who barely even looked at it. That the two judges we had been heard by before that overwhelmingly said no, 
This is clearly wrong and clearly abuse before this one because they looked and understood could be trumped at the last minute by one who openly said he did not understand the world he was meant to make a ruling on. I thought of all the women I had spoken to since the start who had said that they couldn't wait to see criminal charges because they'd rest easier, and were happy I was fighting back, and how I could face them and tell them that the legal system had so completely failed because all it took was one person in a position of power being uninterested in the internet and not thinking it mattered to derail months of horror that millions of eyes witnessed. What parts of me weren't utterly crushed were filled with despair I never had much faith in the system to begin with but when they took what was happening seriously I had invested in the hope that I had been wrong about that, he got away with it, I told him. He got away with Gamergate, we stood waiting for our ride in front of the courthouse when Alex pulled me out of the spiral of hopelessness I had started to fall down, as he had countless times before, by pointing out that there were other ways we had been fighting back that we had invested too much in this one route forward toward the goal of stopping this from happening ever again. We went to the Greasy Spoon Diner that we'd fallen in love with the locals and decor of after prior court dates, and we went back into rebuild mode. I'm back. We made plans for the support network we had been building the last few months, plans to help other people like us where the system had failed us today, and plans on how to work toward getting culture at large to start taking our online world seriously. If we couldn't fight against massive online abuse mobs in the courtroom, we'd fight it our own way. We'd fight it with our words and our empathy and our friends and fellow survivors that we had been amassing over the last few months. Survivors? What the fuck? They're they're fucking survivors. Like it's it's like Nam all over again. <laughs> months. We'd fight to change the culture that let this happen, and we knew what we had to do. This chapter will discuss how sometimes the court systems completely fail you because of a misunderstanding of tech, and how we decided to fight another way. This chapter and the next will serve as a bridging second act to the book, to transition from the problems to the solutions. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it here for the night, actually. We got through the end of the introduction. And next time we'll start off uh, looking at the gay ops, the um, the doxing, the swatting, all the shit that they did to try to shut down all criticism. So, have a good night, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll talk to you guys later.